the Sin Pit. I'm your host, Sean Cole, and welcome to today's edition of the new Pit Stop here at the Sin Pit. And we are making some slight changes about how we go about certain things. So you can see we have a new image, a new title, and again, some changes are going to be made. I've given some analysis over the last couple of years of our, uh, uh, our viewership and our engagement in certain shows. I've also been responding to a lot of conversations and emails of suggestions of what we could do better here at the show. And one of the main takeaways that I got in talking with people over the last couple of months, actually, is that the Simpit has kind of lost some of its roots. And people think of the Simpit, they think of Sean Cole, and they think of really good video footage, really good imagery, really good, solid, in-depth reviews. And that is the mainstay, the cornerstone of the Simpit. And with the, the new age live streaming, which is still very applicable, we're going to do plenty of that moving forward, that we've kind of distracted. We tried so many different combinations that we lost sight of our main purpose, our main point. Now, as you know, the Pit Stop is my pet project. I love the Pit Stop. It's a great show. I love having a new show. But what happened with the Pit Stop and a live audience was so much distraction, we would turn 10 or 12 minutes of news into a one-hour week. I would turn 10 or 12 minutes of news into a one hour show, making it very hard for those just trying to tune in and find some news to follow along and stay with the stories. So my new idea, starting today, is that we do pit stops on Friday only. That will free me up to do a lot more projects, get back to those reviews, get back to those DIY pieces, get more of those online for our viewership to enjoy. We'll save the pit stop for Friday mornings. It'll be a pre-recorded video like I'm doing right now. There'll be no chat to distract me. And then we'll do a viewing party and we'll all watch the video together and we can make comments, including myself in chat. With Twitch, we'll stick around and we'll actually have conversation about all those topics. So instead of having that conversation during the show, it will be held until after and it'll be done at Sid Pit Live on Twitch. That's gonna be the new format. Again, if you ever have suggestions for me, please send them to me, Sean, S-H, a-U-N at the simpit.com. I'm always listening. We're always making adjustments. Some of them happen overnight. Some of them take a few months to make happen. But I think I really like the new format. Hopefully you'll like it as well. So let's get on with the news because that's what we do. We get to the news, we get through it, and then we talk about it later. Starting off with iRacing. And they have now partnered with International STEM League. If you don't know STEM, it's uh, Science, Technology, uh, they don't have the, the acronym here. Uh, I should really have this handy. Here, I'm going to look up STEM. Forgive me. I'm going to also try to do a better job of uh, getting you. STEM is a curriculum, ba is curriculum based on the idea of educating students in four specific disciplines. Science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. And any of you who have kids probably are well of the STEM program. And it's a very important program out there to, to, to increase the ability of our, our children in those four exact areas. So iRacing has now teamed up with STEM in partnership with NTT IndyCar Series driver Dalton Collette and the INSL iRacing Student Innovation Challenges. Uh, they're going to have teams that will develop their own peripherals, build their own simulator rigs before getting out on track and applying their knowledge to, of racing physics to build the most effective setups and turn the quickest lap times. I think this is a great idea. I, the STEM program right off the bat is a great idea and something very, very needed in education to take people who are good, excel in those four categories and expand their minds. And I think of a, a Formula SAE in college where they're, they're using automotive racing and what we can learn and, and apply. Uh, you have your theory and you apply it and you get the results and you get to do all that in Formula SAE -E -E in the college world. Well, now they're taking it all the way down to the children level and getting kids into science, technology, engineering, and mathematics at a very young age. And, you know, uh, uh, video gaming and maybe motorsport in particular might be the best application of, of those sciences because not only does it directly apply so perfectly, so beautifully, because uh, racing is all about mathematics, technology, science, and, and engineering. 
Um, but you also get the fun of the gaming side. They get to be competitive. They, they get to race. They get to video game. And I think that'll be a really good way of, uh, of getting that information into the brains of children. So congratulations to iRacing on taking part in this. I think it's really great. Uh, congratulations to the STEM program, which has been a phenomenal program here in the United States. And uh, I'm not sure if it's worldwide or if it's just the United States. It might be a worldwide thing. International? Uh, International STEM League. I, I'm not sure if it's <laughs> STEM. Anyway, uh, very cool to see that going on. And we will start seeing some young'uns becoming the race engineers of the future via that. All right, this is big news, everybody. Long Beach. Long Beach has sort of been the, the Achilles heel. Long Beach has been the joke uh, of iRacing for so long. And when people talk about what iRacing can and cannot do, the tech track, the... the uh, the gridded out track, it's not even got proper graphics of Long Beach, which dates back to like one of the original tracks, I believe, on iRacing, but has just been left without attention. Yet, Long Beach is such a important racetrack. It's a racetrack that is, is very famous worldwide. Uh, Formula One has run there. IndyCar obviously runs there and, and many other series that support IndyCar. Uh, it's maybe one of the most iconic tracks in the United States. It brings out all the superstars. It gets all the camera footage. It's a big deal. So to not have a proper version of Long Beach and iRacing has been sort of a, a bummer. I, I'll say that. Well, at this point, it's still a work in progress. There's been a lot of rumors that Long Beach was going to be in the service soon in proper form. And some people were really in disbelief, to be honest with you. Like, nah, that won't ever happen. Well, sure enough, it has. And we have a teaser photo. It's, this is all we have. This is going into the fountain section. If you know it, this is just after uh, turn one, going into the, the very famous fountain. Um, and uh, a great looking screenshot, because if you've driven the tech version, it doesn't look anything like this. So it's really great to see that iRacing is getting us Long Beach. Uh, for me, on the open world it's really the home track for, for people in California. This is the one, Long Beach. Uh, I, another great piece of news here on a glorious Friday. So that that's good stuff too as well. And uh, I don't we don't have a date on when it's coming. So lots of work left, but it sure is coming together. This work in progress, so placeholder art is visible. And of course, video FX will hook up the fountain. <laughs> so right now we don't have any running water apparently. Can't wait to share it with you all in more detail soon. So thank you, Greg Hill, for posting that. And uh, yeah, I'm definitely looking forward. That made my weekend, kind of. Uh, R-Factor posted this yesterday, or the day before, actually, but we after we did our show uh, last week on Friday. Uh, their R-Factor 2 ambassador and Porsche racer, Rudy Van Buren, had a pretty hectic weekend at Le Mans. We talked about it, the, the problems he had, the, the weather. Yeah, it wasn't the perfect weekend. Um, he's, they say, stay tuned to their social channels as they follow his progress from Shawsen Ring this weekend. I've, I've never driven Shawsen Ring. Have any of you? Have you guys? Is that a popular track? I've never even heard of it, to be totally honest with you. Anyway, uh, they did do a video with his first lap after the safety car at Le Mans. And I'm going to make sure I have the links to everything I talk about here in the description on YouTube. So if you're watching this and you want to see this video, we'll have a link there in the description of the show for you. And if you're with me on Twitch right now, I'll be posting the links as we go along. But, oh, look at that car going off wide. He's in the rain. Oh, man, can you imagine? You get Well, rain driving for me is really fun. It's hectic. It's crazy. But it's also very fun. But, all right, I'm going to leave this for you to go watch. Obviously, it's a long way around Le Mans. Uh, doing a full lap. So we'll we'll let Rudy finish the lap on his own. And if you want to see it uh, for yourself, you can check out the link in the description. Man, I that is so awesome. I am so jealous. I would love to drive at Le Mans. I would love to drive that Porsche at Le Mans. Go, Rudy, go. You are my hero, buddy. Uh, my big buddy. He calls me every birthday, by the way, just so you know. You know he's my, my solid bro when he calls me every uh, birthday. Um, we talked about the updates for Project Cars 3 over the month because there was sort of a rollout. It didn't all happen at once. Anyway, finally, after much delay or a delay compared to the others, 
Project Cars 3 now has been updated on Xbox One. They do have some update notes. We'll take a look at that. I don't think I have any other news. Congratulations to Michael, Michael Carter, for achieving their first gold rank in Rivals mode. So, good for him. <laughs> anyway, uh, but on the news, getting back to the patch, PC patch and the PlayStation patch both came out on the 17th. And here we have the, the 30th for the Xbox One patch. Double audio, a few things, the audio fixes, career fixes, crash fix fixes, GUI, online, uh, always use player's choice for gearing when quick play and scheduled events assigned, that's good. Rendering updates and some vehicle updates as well. So Project Cars 3 getting its first, I, that was update one as they put it. Uh, Dirt, just to let you guys know, Dirt have teamed up with their friends at Humble and Special Effect to give you a great deal on Dirt Rally 2.0. By supporting one special day on October 2nd, that's today, you can make a difference for gamers with disabilities. So if you've been considering wanting to get yourself a copy of Dirt Rally, you will now be able to get it on a deal via Humble Bundle. And um, with that, you'll also be supporting gamers with disabilities as long as you take advantage of that today. That is today. So uh, the link there is in the description as well. You can follow that. Uh, do you, do you want to be next year's F1 Esport Pro in the Pro Draft? Because qualifying is now open. If you think you have what it takes in the world of F1 2020, head to the F1 Esport tab in F1 2020. It's built into the game. That's actually something kind of cool. You got you to gotta give Codemasters a little bit of credit for that. Building the eSport platform into the physical game, meaning it entices every regular Joe to maybe give it a go. Uh, anyway, head to that tab in F1 2020. Get cool exclusive items just for doing it, and perhaps you can qualify for the Challenger Series. And they have a link there with more information on that one. I don't think I opened that page just yet. We'll open that real quick right now as I take a swig of coffee. So there you go. Uh, and get in-game F1 eSport themed items. So little bonuses just for giving it a go. Maybe we'll have to see what that's all about just for the heck of it. Maybe uh, when I talk about going away from the delayed version of the pit stop in order to free up more time for edited shows. Well, it's also to free up time for, for focused streams, speaking of. Um, and maybe this would be a good focus stream, something getting on, getting on live and having an actual intention, a starting point, a middle point, and an ending, so to speak. Uh, what else? Gran Turismo. We looked at those beautiful Porsches. We all decide whether we are old school or new school, so that's not new news. But they do have some new shots of Gran Turismo 7 for the PS5, and we'll check those out. Looks like, uh, is that the crossbow? I think that's a crossbow, isn't it? Nice looking shot there of them out on track. This particular shot, the cars look wonderful. The terrain of the ground looks very good, and then everything else looks really gamey for Gran Turismo to me. It could just be the shot. One of those beautiful, fantastic garage scenes. Look at those floors. Look at that reflection. Really nice looking shot. That's in game. Gotta like that. Ooh. Now that's beautiful. That's beautiful. And this was our thumbnail shot of the day, if you remember from the beginning of the show. Um, this is pretty amazing. To think that this photo was taken, I'm assuming, while driving. This isn't like that shop photo. And to see this kind of a detail on a console is kind of mind-blowing. I mean, we're not just talking the parts, but look at the little teeny details, like the little rings or zip ties holding the brake line to the the upright. Uh, look at, uh, uh, or to the suspension piece, I'm sorry, to the A-arm. Look at, like, little, the sticker on the oil line, uh, the nuts on the dish diff. Look at the, the separator nut, nuts on this uh, suspension piece. I forget what you call these expanding, where you undo the nuts and you screw it and it lengthens and shortens. I forget what you call those. Um, and, the, and the link there, a uh, really beautiful photo. Again, hard to imagine for me that that's on a console, but sure enough, it is. And that's all we have from Gran Turismo. But really, uh, we're getting close, you guys. You think about it, wow, the time's ticking. 
The clocks are moving and it's already into October. And PS, PS5 and GT7 is not that far off at this point. It'll be tomorrow. It'll seem like it was tomorrow. There is a, that shot in action, by the way, of that garage. There it is. Fun factor! Fun factor! <laughs> WRC9. I don't know who Brent L L Lindick is, but they're in Wales this week for round three of WRC9 Toyota SA Esport Challenge. Remind him how he got into this again, but what fun. Next race is tonight at 8 p.m. They don't tell us which 8 p.m., by the way. It just says tonight. Set your clocks and watch here. And they have a link to a YouTube uh, page. They had another post an hour ago. Rev your engines and gear up for the Toyota eSport Challenge WRC9 as the TG RSA drivers drifted out against the eGamers. Only, uh, only on our Facebook and YouTube channels. Don't miss it tonight, 8 p.m. Toyota USA. I wonder if that's... I'm going to guess 8 p.m. Eastern time if I had to guess. Let's see what we got here. Three hours. I, I stand corrected. So their action begins in only three hours from when I'm filming this. It's 7.15 a.m. Pacific time, my time. So it looks like 11 a.m. Pacific time is when this is going to happen today. So you can check that out as well. You'll find that at Toyota South Africa... Uh, on YouTube, it looks like. Or you can follow any of the links that I have in the description of the show. I showed off the karting photos yesterday, or Friday, I should say, on Rita uh, with Automobilista 2. And they're upgraded imports. These are these are karting tracks that were from Automobilista that have been updated and rebuilt or imported for Automobilista 2. Those are part of the next update. And on the 30th, which was... Friday? They posted this. This was after our show. The update is now scheduled to go live on Friday, October 2nd. That's today. Our regular monthly development update, usually published on the final day of the month, is likewise, likewise slightly delayed and will be published on October 5th. So we have two updates. You have the scheduled update and then their regular monthly update. Anyway, uh, two updates on the 2nd and on the 5th. And that should include those cart tracks. And it's going to be time to fire up Automobilista 2. If you haven't already, and for me, it'll be getting back to it. Because that sim is is definitely one of the front runners for the future, I would say. Uh, there was quick maintenance yesterday for Race Room. And they're doing a little update for the upcoming WTCR Esport Championship. So this is specific to whatever they're doing in order to uh, facilitate that event. And they posted about a day, a little less than a day ago, uh, with some fresh new content for you to race in ranked multiplayer. They're back online. Uh, weekly endurance race, FRUS at Indianapolis, Wednesday, October 7th. So if you're looking for some cool competition race room, this is something uh, available to everybody. They're weekly ranked races. And new content. That sure looks like an indie car to me. All right. What else? What else? Uh, Wreckfest. Wreckfest with an update. Shocking. I'm shocking how much they do. Looks like there is an update for all versions. Xbox 1.6.0.2. Uh, PS4 1.62. And for the PS PC, it's 1.265. Anyway, system changes, tournament changes, game play and vehicle changes, track changes, and audio fixes. So good to see the never-ending updates. You know, I know when small companies that make great products get gobbled up by a larger publishing house, and in this case you had Bugbear, uh, I believe were the makers of Wreckfest who got acquired by or working with THQ. I think there's often concern of what direction a game will go. We could point a finger at Project Cars 3 when Slightly Mad was uh, purchased by Codemasters. Now, I think that purchase happened too late to have much fate in what would happen to Project Cars 3. I think that was predetermined. Uh, but I will say it sure seems like this uh, affiliation between THQ and Bugbear 
has been a good one for the masses. And 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 we could talk about Wreckfest and how it's gotten better or worse. And I'd I'd argue that it's done a little of both. Actually, I think it's gotten a lot better. And it's gotten a little bit worse in certain very specific areas. Anyway, they have been on a really... I mean, you look at their last update. It was only September 15th. That's two weeks ago. They have really been doing a good job of, of backing up that sim and making, in my opinion, one of the greatest driving games. I, I'll say it. Wreckfest, if you just call them driving games, Wreckfest is one of the best driving games of the current generation of games out there. And that takes me to pure rock crawling, which I tested on Simpit Live a few weeks ago, and I was really horribly disappointed. Had a really hard time getting my controls to work. Really, some things in the game seemed horribly simplified. Uh, there was promise. There was hope. There were some aspects that, that to me, thought, man, if this gets THQ, though, <laughs> if this game gets more updates, I will have to try it again, because it's, it, again, it has hope. Uh... Multiplayer beta is the latest update. Uh, update. So they've been working on their multiplayer so you can drive with friends. For me, this was not the update it needed. You know what? I need to be able to play alone before I'm even going to worry for a minute about playing with friends. Uh, so I will keep my eyes on pure rock crawling. I'm glad to see another update because they're... Uh, just a hair over a month between updates, it seems. So they are moving forward. It is an uh, uh, early access game in their defense. So this is part of probably raising funds for a very, very, very small development team in order to keep moving forward on it. So I didn't return the game, to be honest with you. I, I, I In concept and certain things they've done, I enjoyed enough that they can keep my $15 and I'm crossing my fingers that it comes back to me in updates that make the game really playable and really fun. Then it will be worth the $15 I spent. So it's an investment in the future is the way I'm looking at it. And speaking of simulation driving games that support their titles well, I don't think there's anybody better than ATS and ETS. Um, these guys never stop updating the sim scs software just every day there's news of updates whether it be terrain or cars or just general updates across the board a while ago we saw that announcement from western star of the 49x and we saw a whole in-game trailer as well that scs was doing and apparently it has now come out it was revealed a few weeks ago They've worked closely with Western Star and Daimler Trucks North America to bring it to American Truck Simulator, this exclusive new truck. Um, so here it is, and here's some shots of the Western Star in action. There's one shot in particular that I really liked when I looked through these earlier. Uh, I'll show it to you. Uh, but oh, look at that. At the dealer with the, the flag paint job. Yeah, I know some of you. I have a bunch of... Oh, look at the patriotic scheme. I have a lot of friends who play a lot of ETS and ATS, and this is going to be well, well received. Yeah, you can pick up some engines. This is the one. That's the one I loved. Right there. A delivery of brand new Western stars. <laughs> Being pulled, of course, by a Western star. Um... Uh, be sure to share your first journey on their Facebook page and let them know what you're doing with it. So play for free. American Truck Simulator Western Star 49X. And we already covered Colorado. And I believe that is the end of the regular news, you guys. We covered all of our stories. It is 20 minutes into show, including my uh, somewhat long introduction telling you our new layout or, or format for the future moving forward. And, and everything here is... is written in clay, not stone. Uh, we're always changing. We're always evolving. We're always catering to our audience. So before we go, let's cover some sim rigs and some sim pit racing league stuff going on. So let's check this one out. Uh, man cave progression, 80% complete. Nice looking rig by this guy here. How many of you have the luxury? I'm going to call it a luxury. How many of you have the luxury of having a room you can call your man cave? Uh, maybe it's the garage. 
Maybe it's a little closet. How many of you have dedicated space that is away from the kids, away from the wife, away from the family, and allows you to sim race in peace? And even more importantly, decorate the room accordingly, how you want your man cave to be. Anyway, it was more the title by Sim Racing Designs here than the actual image. A clean shot, great looking rig, not to take anything away from it, but it was the mindset that I loved so much. All right, a little before and after by Zoom Posite. <laughs> Did I say that right? I'm not sure. He upgraded from a GT3 wheel and an office chair to a CSW 2.5 and a dedicated rig. Kept the old pedals, uh, but nice. Look at that. We, we joke. We, I don't want to use the word joke. Every day when we do the pit stop, every time we have a photo like this, a, a before photo, and every time somebody, myself included, says, been there, right? We've all been there, and we all end up here. That's the beauty of our wonderful hobby. <laughs> anyway, good looking rig. I like it. A lot of these P1s and P1 type designs. I would argue that it shouldn't be called a P1 design. It should be called a Sean Cole design. I did a DIY 80-20 rig like, you know, 10 years ago. <laughs> Uh, here it is by CXS H Carty. CX Carty. Uh, DIY budget setup. Yeah, look at this wood. Look at this hybrid of a grab a chair and build a death mobile for the chair. But you know the guy, you know the death mobiles that are super serious when they A, get paint and B, have uh, inclined pedals, you know, where you have a little rake on the pedals. So, uh, anyway, nice budget set up there. I tell you, that Logitech 920, G920, G29, G920, uh, that wheel win races. That's the king of the budget setup right there. You can pick those up for like $249. I found that out in my research for the G923 review that, yes, in fact, you could get 920s and G923, 920s, G29s and G920s for as little as $249 went on sale. So, anyway, uh, good looking DIY rig there. Budget DIY. And, man, I have come this close to getting this crazy. <laughs> I have come this close, you guys. I admit it. I If I didn't do this show, this probably would have happened. And it's not the show that prevented it, it's the space, I think, that prevented it. But,. Uh, Gabe Pater asked this. Any VW crazies? Sort of OC. Obsessive compulsive. A condition I know very well. Check that out. I'm very impressed. I like that. You know what? Considering how much car he has here, it doesn't even take up that much space. Now, why would you put a shooter game on your screen when you're demonstrating your rig? That's the one question I do have for you, Gabe Pater. And then that takes us to this. I'm not going to play the whole video. There will be a link in the description if you want to do it. But restoring a Thrustmaster T2 from 1996, we've come a long way. And, and, and this picture here just made me think, uh, when we talk about those starter rigs, and we've all been there, how many of you have been here? How many of you have been bungee wheelers? Well, it's really old. <laughs> Anyway, you can go check it out. If you want to reminisce for the old days of bungee wheels, you can check out this video here. Uh, restoring one of the OG racing wheels of Sim Racing Era. All right, let's see here. We have Dirt Rally League. Dirt Rally League, we are expecting... Uh, nope, we're not going to get any more highlights. We'll have to tune in next week to find out how things played out. Uh, but from event number 10, so many of you guys racing this. Bomb Holder, Hammerstein... Uh, Savage wins again. Wow, it is really hard to beat Mr. Macho Man Randy Savage when it comes to our Dirt Rally League. Brandon the MXer in second. Aless Mom, how you doing, Belly? You're in third. Dave Blair, Dave Danger Blair in fourth. Kath, you're in fifth. Hola! 
Um, Dioniso, you're in seventh. Booth, back in eighth. TFR, you're in ninth. Scion, tenth. And Nizzy, who's Nizzy? Is Nizzy Izzy? Uh, in 11th place. I'm going to have to figure out who uh, Nizzy is. Anyway, and then we have our Simpit Mustang Series, and things have now wrapped up in the Mustang Series, and here are our final standings. Jason Gata, number one. Tight battle for our top three, by the way. Look at these points. Jason Gata, average finish. No wins on the season, but an average finish position of six. Gets him 359 points. David Clymer with one win on the season. Uh, average finishing position of six with 346 coming in as very close but distant at the same time second and Brandon Skinner right there a points battle to the very end with an average finish of fifth place coming in with 345 points and third on our board Roger Clark and Brandon Carl are our top five Murano Blair Booth Jameson and E-Step round out the top 10 in the Sid Pitt Mustang season and I will have information, uh, hopefully, for next Friday's show. Next Friday's show, we will have information on next season, moving forward, Simpit Mustang Series, Dirt Rally League, all, all of our other leagues will have more info in the next uh, week, hopefully, maybe two at the, at the last. And then that takes us tonight. Tonight, we have the Simpit Oval Arca League, race number two at Bristol. Our guys, man, we had like 35 cars on the track at Lanier. And it was a great race considering how small Lanier it is, how many cars there are on the track. And at the end, David Clymer won the race. Brandon Skinner in second, Jesse Fox in third. And we take those points and those drivers and we go to Bristol tonight at 5 o'clock. I'll be Simp It Live at 5 o'clock tonight. At 6 o'clock tonight on the Simp It at YouTube, Devin Booth will be doing the broadcast from Bristol. You'll be able to watch the action, talk to, to Devin and hear his commentary or you can watch it from my perspective, Simpit Live on Twitch tonight for the Simpit Oval Arca League. And then tomorrow, I'm sorry, Sunday, 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 we have race number two in the Simpit LMP2 League. Another incredible league. We, we are we kicked off last week with such great racing. I was so impressed what we did. Anyway, we're at Silverstone on Sunday. Silverstone is my uh-oh track. Um, I was thinking about the way I stream races, and with me, you get two variations of a stream you get the i'm having a bad day and i swear a lot and 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 i get mad at myself all the time or i'm having a good day and i don't say a single word we'll get one of those two for sure out of silverstone that being sunday 10 a.m practice 11 a.m those are all pacific standard time for the race and i'll be doing that sim pit live on twitch so that is going to do it for today the new Pit stop. We will not be back for a pit stop until next Friday, but just like today, I'm going to be sitting there watching the show with you, and then if you want to comment or talk about the topics of the show, you're going to need to tune in to Simpit Live on Twitch starting right now, because as soon as this show ends, we're going to be talking about it after having watched it at Simpit Live this morning. Thanks for tuning in. I hope you like the changes. And like I said, if you ever have suggestions for the show, Sean, S-H-A-U-N at the simpit.com and let me know what you think we can do better. Get out there, do some sim racing, have yourselves a great weekend. This is the Simpit. I'm Sean Cole and I'll see you on the track.